Hello everyone, and welcome back to Star Control 2, Oko Master's Hardcore Challenge. Um, we are on the touch screen here, nothing bad happened, um, I haven't lost a save or anything. I just want to show you something um, that I found out, because uh, basically, um, when, when I start the game, for some reason, if you're having this issue, um, just go into graphics and then just quit setup menu, and then it goes back to the original... Uh, sort of uh, 3 to 4 aspect ratio. I don't know if that's just me or I've set it up wrong or something. It's just that for some reason episode 1 um, got stretched to the full uh, 180p size, 16 by 9 But let's just load up the game. Um, this looks a lot better, I think. It, it looks better not stretched. It's just um, how the game is made, I guess, so it's obviously going to look better. So we need to go to Alpha Wolf Planet 4A, I think it was. So yeah, I'm guessing it's 4A because I'm not going to mine for biodata on a gas giant, so it's probably the moon. Um, so let's go and see what happens. Uh, ap apparently, this is quite a difficult plant to get biodata on because the biodata there is quite um, hostile. Uh, but let's just see what happens, I guess. Uh, of course, as I said, it doesn't matter about RU, so I mean, whatever minerals are on this planet, I'm not really going to care about. Um, it doesn't, at the same time, it doesn't really matter if we collect any at all. You know, it doesn't matter if we have radioactives or exotics, all of them are the same, none of them matter. Because by the time we get to the starbase to spend them, we'll already had, have infinite IUs thanks to the stream Earth. Um, so, um, obviously, uh, oh yeah, th there's these guys, these are quite hostile and they take a load of hits to actually kill as well. And there's also some faster moving ones, I really hope it's not, oh it's those ones. Those are, those are a little bit annoying. The worst of those tentacle, uh, sort of, squid ones that move really quickly and just go for your ship straight away. Those are horrible. And we've also got some weird neutral ones. Well, oh, no, no, no! Oh, that is terrible. Oh, that was awful. It just landed right on me. I guess I'm going to have to load up the game again. Good thing I saved. Okay, let's try again. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, we've got to make sure we don't... So, we've also got Tectonics Class 4, which is going to make it even more tricky. Okay, that's maybe difficult then. Uh, I'm going to have to take this slowly get hits in when I can. Now the best way to sort of um, do the most damage or the most efficient damage to them is to sort of uh, round them up. Luckily I'm moving quicker than them which is really good but you want to sort of round them up um, so that you can hit all of them at once because if they're all in the sort of same area you can uh, sort of do damage to all of them. So if I drive away, whoa that was a close one. Okay, whoa okay that was close. God, they're all landing, they're, all the things are right in front of me. So you can see I'm actually hitting multiple of them, you know, hitting most of them at once. So there we go, I've already killed one. So there's a little bit of biodata. Of course, every piece of biodata is two credits, uh, which means that every one biodata is two fuel units, which is actually pretty good. I mean, it's a good tactic in Star Control standard play. I mean, if you collect a lot of biodata, I mean, technically, if you think about it, one biodata is worth 40 RUs, so, you know, it's pretty valuable stuff, really, if you go out there and just collect a bunch of it. Um, but of course, at the same time, it's very easy to just, you know, every single planet has minerals and a lot, there's a lot of radioactives and a lot of noble gases and stuff like that. It's quite easy to collect a lot of good minerals and exotics and things like that. Um, but, you know, biodata is always a brilliant thing to pick up. Oh, I've already taken a bit of damage, that wasn't brilliant, I need to... Oh my word, there's a load, there was a load of them there. I've lost four crew, I mean I can deal with that maybe. That's okay, I guess, just about. If I lose any more I might reload. Four's maybe the bare max that I might want to lose. As you can see I'm hitting most of them at once, which is good. They take a real beating, these things. Um, it'd be really good to get some of the upgrades like the biodata um, defense. Uh, okay, I lost two biodata there, which is annoying, but whatever, that's fine. So 50 by later in the bank, that's pretty nice. Uh, so at least we're safe for now, in terms of being able to buy some fuel back from the Mel Norme, which is awesome. Um, so that's useful. Now, yeah, as I said, also we want to buy technology from the Mel Norme, it's 150 credits, or 75 biodata per that. Um, I think the first good upgrade that we want is the bio, data, the bio defense, or like the uh, life form defense, which is like upgrade 4 I think. So we're going to need like 600 credits or 300 biodata to get that. Um, and then there's also the defenses for like uh, terrain, uh, for earthquakes and things like that. Double speed shooting, which is a lot further down the line. And we definitely want to upgrade our ship to um, at least get uh, those things so that we can more easily collect more biodata in the future. 
um, and therefore make it easier for us to pick out planets that are perhaps more hostile. I mean, this is one of the more difficult ones, uh, and early on as well, which makes it even more tricky. Um, because it's very difficult for me to stay alive on this sort of planet, because um, it's obviously very difficult. But I think, there we go, I've cleared out the planet, and it looks like I've got a good 90 biodata from that, which is 180 fuel units, which is awesome. So that's actually a really good start. I'm really happy about that. And, uh, yeah, 90. Exactly 90. Awesome. So, uh, that means that we can now travel up into, into, into hyperspace again, and we don't have to really worry too much about uh, losing fuel, except for the Slylandro attacking us. That's going to be the one thing, because obviously we're going to run out of fuel, and therefore the Slylandro are free to just sort of charge in on us and attack, um, which is, which is uh, annoying, but we're going to have to just uh, use Fwifo and uh, hold them off until the Melnor may come and visit. Um, Guessing we're going to have to face like maybe four or five Slylandros, so it may be tricky, but hopefully we can do that. And we we can load up if we uh, if anything bad happens, like properly bad, like we lose Fwifo. Um So might as well just head off in that direction. As you can see, we can't really go too much further than past that sphere. So once we hit that, we're going to run out of fuel, and uh, we won't be able to move um, for a little bit until the Melnor may come. We can buy some fuel, keep heading up in that direction and uh, go and mine for a few planets. I've already uh, run down a few planets that I know on the way are pretty good to go and get uh, bio, bio data at, which is nice. Um, and yeah, probably going to go head off, make a beeline for the Quasi Space Natural Portal, go up to Corvi, uh, there's a lot of bio data up there as well, stop the probes from attacking, things like that, and we'll see what happens from there. But here we go, looks like a Slalandra probe has just met us here. Uh, let's save the game, and... Uh, Let's talk. Let's talk to this thing. We bring greetings from the Grandway species. Oh, really? I don't think so. According to internal monitors, there are no malfunctions. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. I must congratulate the Slalandra on their brilliant programming uh, uh, amazingness uh, because they did a really good job of making these probes. Super friendly, great at learning about the uh, galaxy, learning about alien life forms, really good. Um, and now I'm going to have to destroy one of them. So it looks like I have pulled off that little strategy of uh, making this little android come for me, and it looks, oh it was nearly a quick victory there, but there we go, I've done it again, and it looks like this may be it, with this hit here. Yes, there we are, lost no crew, that was great. Awesome, so there's the first one down, only a couple more to go, and we should be fine. To, uh, to head off again. Of course, once we've got fuel, we can use that little uh, trick to stop the Slalandra from reaching us, which is awesome. Um, and I also feel that since the game sort of ups the number of, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a bug or it's like a, it makes you go to the um, Starbase, because, you know, for some reason, Slalandra probably just so much more, um, they, they spawn so much more if you don't go to like, Starbase. So, I mean, by, this, by the time we've dealt with these ones coming in now, we would have taken down a good maybe five which I think is fair enough, um, because we probably would have fought about five. I think we fought about. We shall not harm you. I think we fought about ten. I will initiate the normal game, maybe more. I don't know. Fourth. Checking, checking, checking. Systems check level four. Reports no abnormalities or malfunctions. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. And here we go again. So yeah, as I was saying, I mean, we, we fought, fought maybe 10 or a couple more in the uh, original playthrough, and I mean, we didn't really fix the Slalandro sort of uh, programming bug until like, episode 23, which is more than halfway through the game. So I think it's fair enough that we've fought nearly 5, and we've, we're only on episode... well, we've, we've fought 3. I think I'm going to fight about 4 or 5 before this, the, the Melnor may come, but... I mean, we've already fought... this is the third one, and we've already been um, playing for... Oh, I lose so much crew. Did I hit a planet? I don't know. I must have hit a planet. That's really annoying, actually. Well, there we go. I guess I hit that planet on the way. I'm trying to uh, get the Slandra to hit me, which is quite frustrating, really. But whatever, we'll just deal with it. Um, but yeah, as I said, we're, we're making a beeline for uh, Source. So, I mean, five Slandra I think is fair enough. And I think we can pull off that little, that little trick without feeling too cheaty about it. Um, so I, I, I'd say that's that's fine. Looks like they're just about dodging. Okay, I need to get one more hit on them. And uh, he'd be down. There we go. So again, I mean, we hit a planet, I think. Oh god, I nearly got pulled in again. But we did 
not really lose too much crew, which is fine. We took down another Slylandro. And uh, let's see what, what comes. I'm guessing that the Slylandro is going to... Another one is going to come before the Melnorme visit. Let's have a look. Yep, yeah, that looks like a Slylandro. Here it comes. Oh, that might be the Melnorme. They're moving a lot slower, and I don't think I'm in Ilrath's face. So hopefully that's not an Ilrath. <laughs> hopefully that's a Melnorme. But here we go. Here's another Slylandro. Here it is. Can just converse, I guess. Yep, yeah, as you say, you're on a peaceful mission, destroying everything you find. Report nominal function. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. Okay, so I think this will be the last Lylandra that we have to defeat before the Melnorme visit, which is great because, uh, well we don't have to lose any more crew, so hopefully I can just pull this off quickly like I did with the first one. Uh, but it's dodging quite a lot, which is annoying. And uh, it looks like I managed to keep it uh, trying to track me for a little bit there. Um, oh, here we go, I've pulled it in again. Look, I don't know why, it's a weird It's a weird thing that it sort of follows you if you turn early before it goes off the screen. Um, it's a good tactic against the Slyandra, uh, Sly definitely, because they slowly, slowly come closer and by that time you should be able to get a good number of hits on them. I mean it's like six six hits to uh, to destroy one, so you should be able to get at least four on them. Um, or at least, you know, at least three, as I just did there. So that's half of their health down. And you just gotta try and time it right and uh, it becomes easier and easier to hit them with the uh, the bot missile. The Spathy, a brilliant weapon. So uh Ooh, nearly nearly down. Just dodging and they're being a little bit spast. Oh, that's really annoying. That is so frustrating. I hit another planet. So there's another big chunk of crew down. Oh, if I only just hit with like one more crew. Like one more uh, missile. Oh, that is so frustrating. Ooh, so I'm down to like maybe 16, 18 crew in the Spathia Luda now. So, obviously, crew is extremely important because I can't get any more until I go and meet the Bakunk and use their furies to sort of reheal during battles. Here come the Melnor, mate! I am Tree Master Greenish, in command of the Melnor May Starship, inevitably successful in all circumstances. That's such a great name. I bid you a formal welcome, Captain. Though we Melnor May have just recently arrived in this region of space, we have long desired to make contact with your species and look forward to an extended Relationship. We come in peace, Mel Norme. Even before our first meeting, we knew of you, Captain. Though your struggle to free Earth shall be a long and difficult challenge, fraught with great danger and mystery, we have great confidence in you and your abilities. Okay, let's try and get them to start talking about trading. It's quick as we can. So, can you tell us about any trade you have? Absolutely. Our primary trade good is information. Why, right here on my display screen, I have something which, I am certain, would be of incalculable value to you. We can discuss the details of this very significant information later, when we have established normal trading procedures, at which time we shall also discuss the nature of our fees. Fees? Come on, Melnorme. I mean, come on, we're, we're good you friends. Are of course, correct. We long ago abandoned currency, and now only deal with commodities that have intrinsic value, such as valuable information. Huh. How, uh. What do we say now then? I don't think we want to go for the top one, because that will make them hostile. I'll just go for the third one. How do you know about us? Because that seems like the only thing to say, really. We gather information from a thousand secret sources in space and time. Our charge for revealing even one of these sources would be so high that your species would be in debt to us for centuries. Okay. I guess the only thing to say is the top thing. What can you tell us about yourselves, Greenish? Our origins and purposes are frankly mysterious, and due to several unavoidable factors, we are unable to discuss ourselves in any great detail. 
Unavoidable factors. I don't think they're going to tell us about them. Let's just start trading as quick as we can. Yes, let us get down to business. Since this is your first time trading with us, let me explain how our system works. We are interested in purchasing certain items, specifically biological data on alien life forms, and the coordinates of certain strange worlds whose radiant energies defy all scanners, producing a rainbow-like image. In exchange, we have many interesting and valuable commodities, such as fuel, compatible with your starship's hyperdrive thrusters, technological specifications, allowing you to build new devices for your ship, and many important secrets which may help you in your travels to facilitate trade we translate all your sales into interstar credits with which you may make purchases if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask now what can we do for you today Okay, well for now, I'm going to sell off my biodata for them, for 180 credits. Would you like to sell, Captain? I have some data on alien life forms, Greenish. 19 units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you 118 credits. There we are, we got 180 credits, awesome. Um, I would like to make some purchases now, what get some fuel. What items would you like to buy today? I would like to buy some fuel, please. As you know, we carry a large supply of fuel on board, which is compatible with your engine system. We will be happy to sell this substance to you at a cost of one credit per fuel unit. How much fuel do you wish to purchase? I would like to purchase all the fuel I need to fill up my tanks. To your vessel. Thank you. Okay, well there we go, I'm done. Goodbye, Greenish. That was fun. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. Okay, so there we go. We've just bought uh, 60 fuel units from the Mel Norme, and we still have 120 biodata in the bank. Uh, 120 credits, sorry, in the bank. And now look at our uh, look how far we can travel. Now we can make our way all the way to uh, the quasi natural portal. Hopefully we uh, we manage to uh, get there on like the 17th, between the 17th and the 20th. I don't know. Um, now actually, one thing um, we do need to do actually is also go to Alpha Pavonis if we want to get like the um, the any time quasi portal spawner. But we don't really need to bother about that at the moment. Uh, but we definitely will be going there at some point. I need to sort of plan out really what I'm going to do, um, because obviously every every sort of uh, movement matters. But for now, I'm going to head straight over to Quasi Space and use that little uh, thing to uh, keep dodging all the Slylandro. Um, actually, I'm going to probably visit some planets in the meantime to go and uh, mine them for some biodata. So we'll do that next episode. Um, looks like there was one at Delta Cygnus, I think, that would be good, or Alpha Cygnus. I can't remember now. But that looks like a good place to get get, get, get some bio data. Um, so I'll see you next time when we go to do that and go through the quasi portal uh, to go and stop these probes from attacking. See you then.